You've recently heard Kelsey and Jay talk about the important role content plays in achieving your SEO goals. Then Aaron did the same thing in regard to user experience. And yes, both are very important, but none of it makes a difference if neither clients or Google can find it. So let's talk about content deliverability. If you're doing it right, your website is full of great content. Content that gets people excited about buying cars and vehicle description pages, or VDP, that include vital information about the specific vehicles on your lot. Your worst nightmare is a potential customer trying to reach a VDP and they can't, resulting in a probable loss of sale. So how can we detect and troubleshoot these issues? In most cases, a customer would have reached that VDP as a result of a Google search. Then by clicking a link, so what you want to do is navigate to the desired page to simulate their experience. Did you reach it without any issue? If so, that's good. That means potential customers are likely to reach it as well. Now let's take a look behind the scenes. Reaching a desired page generates what we call a 200 response code. As a developer, the response code is what I see and it clues me in on any issues that might need to be fixed. But what if you didn't arrive at the page you wanted? Clearly there's an issue and one that a potential customer might experience as well. Maybe you ended up on a general page, such as a search results page or a home page. This means you were redirected. A redirect corresponds with a 302 response code, which on the back end means there's a redirect rule that was set in place so that anyone attempting to reach that page in question would be sent to where you ended up. Why would this happen? For lots of reasons. Maybe the desired page was a vehicle page that recently sold, so that page has been removed from the site. Maybe it contained outdated information and has been set up so that users arrive at an updated resource. Or maybe there's a genuine issue. If that's the case, you need to address it with whoever is in charge of maintaining your website. Maybe you ended up on a directory or a page telling you that the desired page could not be found. This corresponds with a 404 response code, and that means the URL did not match any URLs that were registered for the site. In many cases, this comes down to a simple spelling error. So what do you need to do? First, check the URL as it appears within the navigation bar. If it's incorrect, you need to rule out your own user error first. Then, just type better. But if you typed it correctly or simply clicked a link or button, a larger issue could be generating that 404 response code. Again, talk to whomever is in charge of your website to get this resolved. When it comes to issues that you need to address with your website administrator, a 500 response code ranks pretty high. A 500 code is likely to tell you that something to the effect of internal error or internal server error, this means there's a serious problem within the code that generates your website. That's a big red flag, and you need to get that checked out immediately. Remember, online research for potential car buyers isn't a phase or a fad. And if 2020 has shown us anything, your dealership's online presence is more important than ever. Needless to say, anytime someone tries to visit your website or a particular page and can't access it, it's a loss for your business. The harder you make it for them to shop on their time, on their terms, the more likely they're gonna buy from your competitors. A healthy website means happy customers. Which just about wraps things up for this week. Next week, we're gonna talk about one of the most important reasons Google may or may not be noticing your dealership site. So be sure to join us next Thursday and every Thursday for more SEO and digital marketing insights right here on Just the Tip.